Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are here to bring you map number two of Dignitas versus Ents. Dignitas closed out Nuke 16 to 14 off stream, sadly, due to technical issues. But now we're ready to roll with Train. This is Ents' map pick. And considering how close they made Nuke, there is a strong chance that Dignitas could be in trouble. The third map being overpassed. The pistol round sees Ents stack up outside B as they look to push forward. Both Exist and Halzerk are sat here, waiting. Yeah, and with a passive enough A play as well, they do have the ability for fairly quick rotations to come in. That nade is perfect. So much damage done there by Exist. Looking to just spam away now and see if he can finish any off. Apparently not, though. Actually taken down by Alu and Sergei haven't got up close to that connector smoke. Was also able to get rid of Halzerk. So suddenly it is actually a man advantage for Ents now in the after plant. Haven't taken some damage, though. I don't think they're too comfortable with sitting back. They actually flash Sergei in towards the back line so we can see what he can find. Gets a dink. Before eventually going down, but without her kill being found by Alu again, it is Dignitas trying to work their way back into this round. Quick headshot by Freiburg. Forrest nearly catching himself that kill, but in the end, Ariel able to come out on top and now staying alive. Both players are low. Freiburg actually has the defuse kill. Okay. Alongside the smoke, it is going to be able to just go ahead and try and stick this bomb. The shot's initially being missed, but Ariel with that Glock can afford to spam a little quicker. Well, and got away with that, but... It was, uh, it was a little bit tight. Dignitas, despite the early nade damage going through and exist, the fact that they lost the B bomb site so quickly and so convincingly really stems into the issue for the round as Ents now move on. They're picking themselves up one AK. You've got an MP5 coming through, two Mac 10s, and finally, yeah, another rifle to make an appearance on Alu. Alu's been playing really well in this series. I mean, you saw him on the T side of Nuke have some insane rounds. Oh, the nades! Huge damage done with combine that with the double scout setup. Ends could be in a lot of trouble really soon. Forrest, though, locally missing his deagle shots, but eventually the look runs out. Not able to follow up with another kill, but again, it goes for the damage being done. Keeps exist and Freiburg in with a shot. I've at least been able to pull a few more kills out of this one. If not, maybe even pull it back for the win. As I say, that exist does fall. Freiburg then gets caught as well. Here, the player pushing up close on his left side and. Ends up getting peaked by Ariel then from towards main. I believe that was around the train. So with that, the second round being found, able to overcome that force buy from Dignitas. Ents getting themselves off to a better start here on train, which is what you need to see. This is their map choice, obviously. They did end up dropping Nuke, despite at one point having a 14-7 to lead. They ended up losing a 16-14, so that was a, a spectacular comeback from Dignitas. Of course, we didn't get to ca catch the last couple of rounds because there was a GoTV issue. Still kind of sad about that one. I wanted to, wanted to see exactly what happened. We had such a massive build up to that point as well. Oh, damn, the nade made that a little bit easier for Get Right just running across to get himself one headshot. Unfortunately, it doesn't really amount to too much else for them in this round. Quickly being cleaned up by Ents. Able to build up a little bit of money there on Alu as well as he gets himself three with the Mac 10. So, of course, that's going to help out if he wants to upgrade to the op here. We were talking about uh, the other day when we were looking at Godsend, the results they've had in Elisa, but Ents. They were playing there, what was it, yesterday? Uh, I lose track of days very quickly now. But yeah, it was yesterday, and they're actually going flawless at the moment. They beat Godsend, Dignitas, and Apex, who we've seen some other teams struggle against. But you do have to note the difference is that they have Yampi playing there. Right here, they're not. They're back with X7. So there's a little bit of a, a change up of rosters in terms of how that's rolling. The CT, so much damage done. Alu's left in a 1v4 as they blitzed out a pop dog and blitz to the floor. The op in play. Looking for a victim, and he might find it towards... Indeed, he does towards Old Bomb, but... There's a player up in heaven that I don't think he's going to expect. With the smoke down, looking to take the bomb back under his control. There's just so much to consider for him right now. You can see he's worried about someone pushing up Olaf on either side of the trains, up above him. And he's left the bomb. As the smoke fades, though, they'll realize that well, he hasn't taken it. And with that, you know he, he's not out Pop Dog, so, I mean, back is the only way he could go. Exist pushed up on B, confirms it's not going to be Connector. And at that point, for the next 10 seconds or so, you're only really worried about T-Main, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, in theory, could have made his way around towards Pop Dog as well, but with how passive it's been played, as you said, they, at least for the next 10 or so seconds, they wouldn't be finding contact in that area. So, for now, focused mostly towards main. Pretty passive, though. They have the op up in heaven. Halzerk's just going to be holding the bomb itself pretty much in towards the back lines. Then, of course, having Freiburg, he's tagged up heavily, so we can't really afford to fight too aggressively. But time is beginning to get low now.
Now that tag pretty much seals the fate of the round. Falling back, he's going to be hunted down like an animal and exist was just waiting for him. Make a move back towards team main. Second up on the floor, they decide not to take it, possibly because of the buy they could be up against, but Ents will be getting themselves a full investment after the cash they had stacked up on the 3-0 lead. It's somewhat surprising that they don't take a double up setup on train. It's one of the most viable places to pull it out. Then again, it was Exist up there, and he's got an AK to work with. Be an equally valuable weapon, and there's so far been no call for it. Obviously, you're only coming into your second buy, uh, buy route. Oh, excuse me. You don't really know what ends are going to be deploying. The up and upper quickly takes out Hauser. The Exist, though, still in a pretty decent position to hold this one down and gets four. The only kill being found is back from X7 there over towards Ivy. Left as the last man standing. The bomb and just everything being just left at the bottom of ramp right now. They are surprisingly getting aggressive, but get right. Okay, I haven't even realized he was pushed up. I didn't have the uh, the camera on his unit. I swapped over to X7 for some reason trying to find out where he actually got that kill initially because I was completely focused, obviously, on Exist getting that massive 4K spray down as they came through the ramp. And that, des that decimates the economy here for Ents. They have n nothing really to invest into this round. Maybe a few pistols can be upgraded, but not much else. So we should see Dignitas has been able to get themselves up to three. And with that, of course, tying up the scoreline. And Gary obviously also getting a nice little boost in economy with the knife that he was able to find. Does, yeah, I would say, where's Forrest going? He had to run back to the spawn to get his M4. He had accidentally dropped it, apparently. Well, it looks like we're going to see a typical pistol ram unfold, and Dean. Lots of players towards upper B just barreling out, and in fact, most coming through heaven. And without a smoke, it's a little bit risky. The off from afar can take one. The spacing wasn't great. He could have posted up for a second, but not wanting to risk it. The molly coming down towards the site. Oh, it actually doesn't go on site. It's at the back of Grey Train. So it doesn't stop a bomb plant, which eventually comes through. And despite not losing a player... Over on the Dignitas side, they have allowed a bomb plant to come through, which is a, a negative in a way. I'd like to see a little more from Anson around like that, but the bomb plant is like a, a minimum condition for them. Now that that's ticked, they're up 3-3. Three to three With the chance to get the full investment out. Still though, look at the money that the CTs have been able to build up. They've got that right at their backs, and as long as they can find themselves a little bit of a... Uh, a little bit of a start, you know, finding this or the next round, it shouldn't be too terrible. Yeah, obviously having the op and such here for Alu now. This is where they really will get back into contending for the rounds, as you said. Molotov aggressive towards Ivy, but not really following up themselves with any aggression on the side of Dignitas. A fairly passive round. Taking the four-man stack over towards the A side of the map so that they can hold pop dog control, have a player then around the E-box as well, watching main. So a fairly aggressive stance and interesting exists to solo that B-bomb site, which at the moment definitely could make sense. He had a massive round just a moment ago. Oh, that nade actually just about going over the players who were creeping up close to that smoke. And with that Freiburg, he's actually playing a little bit more passive now. This gives a chance for them to go ahead and close in the distance. And indeed, Sonny, he swings out. Freiburg's head is immediately gone. And now the split's going to be coming straight in towards this A bomb site. That player in Pop Dog could still be a bit of an issue for them. And Halzerk has already gone ahead and pulled one back. Forrest, he's willing to give up the bomb site itself. Also, the issue is Get Right actually does go down in Pop Dog without really being able to find anything. So Halzerk feeling the pressure. Wants to go forward and see if he could pull anything back before that bomb gets planted, but he's really successful. Difficult retake on hand. At least they have got the kids to play with the Dignitas, but Exist spammed from down below. Not a fight he's likely to fare too well in. No utility to flush that player out or even deal extra damage. And with that and the time being so low, I think it is time to just bail on back and take the save. Forrest hoping he gets an exit frag. It doesn't look like that's going to be happening. And Ents surviving with four players. That is convincing a buy round as they could have realistically hoped for. The only downside is that Dignitas also carrying forward so many rifles means that they'll be in a spot where investment won't cripple their economy. It'll leave them with still another round where they can buy afterwards. But being on four early on, it's a good sign for Ents. Don't get me wrong. They've got themselves a buy round just now that looks convincing. And that's the part that's really solid about it.
you know, if they were just about clutching them out and taking a few rounds, but only barely, the problem then would be well, when you're winning that pistol and following up with a 3-0 lead. Although normally six, seven rounds is good for the T side, you do want to see them towards a closer to double digits when you get that early advantage. Yeah, that's still a possibility for sure. Right now, though, Dignitas can exist specifically. Actually, he spots two of them coming around the corner, nearly lined them up for the spray down. In the end, only able to get the one kill. A good bit of damage being put through onto Sergei, but elsewhere, Halzerk also being tagged up and with the bomb site now being lost. And with also the very aggressive smoke slowing down this rotation from getting into place, it's going to be tough for them to make this retake happen. I was going to say, if they don't get a kill quickly, they could consider the retake. But Sergei caught up close towards Connect their get right flashes in through the smoke. Find Sunny waiting on the other side, who's having a little bit of a tough game so far. Alu does get one return, but now he's in on the bomb site trapped. He has his teammate only now beginning to rotate in position to try and help him. In towards heaven, at least. Having a Molotov on Alu, not really in a position where he could use that to delay the bomb. Instead, it comes to X7, gets two, and now Forrest alone. The bomb planted, though, on the other side of that bomb train. He taps it to bait out the drop, and will be able to, able to find the kill. And, of course, with the, with the defuse kit as well, does have time. I was extremely close there, but he gets it. Just oh, about. Retrieved as well. Yeah, it was it was quite close in the end, but overall a positive outcome for Dignitas. They get the round win, they get their AWP and bomb planned under their belt. They're also in with another investment, and we're seeing these nice tight rounds early on continuing the roll. But we have a bit of a problem. A technical pause comes through. This is for Edge. Dignitas, I believe. Halzerk's team speak team is speak crashed yet again. acting up. Yeah, it's really not been having a good time. We saw the same thing over on Nuke. It shouldn't take all too long. I think it's just a minute or two. We should be good to go. Aldean on 4-4, four to four, I guess they've got a little bit of time to reflect as well amongst themselves and figure out where exactly they're they're at. Because Ents, moving in, take a look at their money. Not fantastic. If they lose their push to an eco, Dignitas as well with only $1,400 coming in. A lot of their players will be struggling should they lose here. So it is a fairly important round, and as well as that, if Ents do fail to take it or indeed find some decent damage, then that little bit of cash Dignitas have in the bank will start to multiply pretty quickly. So far, the T-sides in general from Ents have been solid. We saw it on Nuke. And so far on the uh, offense, they've had at least that one very convincing round with the rifles. Push, not expected. A lot of the players blind, but actually, excuse me, only one of them was blind. X7 and Alu turning away, catching themselves the kill afterwards. And with an opening in towards Ivy, they're starting to move forward. That's a hyper aggressive push, but Halzerk misses the shot, and that could be costly. Yeah, it, it looks like it will in the end be. The trades were continuously just back and forth. They do end up favoring Ents. Quite a bit will exist actually being left alone now. He's going to stick around for the moment. If he can find a quick kill, then it is definitely worth going for. If not, though, it could be worthwhile for him to save the M4. But there we go. Actually catches the bomb crossing over. Molotov down to try and delay any recovery of it. Of it but I don't think it's going to quite work. Uh, Nade also helping out a little bit now by dropping him down to two-thirds of his health. And indeed making it a slight bit easier for those rifles to finish it. But it doesn't matter exist. He somehow made it past that initial angle being held. Got his way up onto the bomb train and put in quite a lot of damage before eventually falling. Making that a bit of a closer one for sure. Not letting Ents live with too many players. But as I said, saving that weapon over would have helped massively. Because with that, they probably could have scraped the bite together. Exist could have dropped one. He would have had enough to reinvest into his own nades. Get right and Forest could have bought for themselves. Freiburg maybe would have been struggling a little bit. But now they're just looking at the full eco. Deagles. Is Zeus being brought out for Halzer. He's not bothering to go for a pistol. He's happy enough with that. In towards Pop Dog. Yeah, makes sense. If someone drops down, he has a chance to try and steal the weapon away. A ballsy play, if ever I've seen one. Usually it's down at the ramp where exists is that you'll see a, a Zeus being deployed. Yeah, a little bit more oh, common because you can just hold up close. Yeah, crouch on the angle. Oh. See there, he's not close enough as they come down. I think he was a down. bit too far. Yeah, either way. He didn't exactly. even get the shot off. Well, a little bit awkward. Three Deagles, they can definitely still get another kill or two out of this, make it a worthwhile round. They haven't put too much investment into it. A few kills would be nice. Maybe save over a rifle. 
Sonny's up close with the Mac-10 in hand. Swings right after that Deagle shot comes out. And just kind of baiting his teammates a little bit. It's fine. That's fine. Ariel on to get right to leave. Exist all by himself. Lonely boy with the Deagle in hand. Looks for a victim but finds only solace in death. And six to four they go. And the strong start on the terrorist side. They were 3-0 up. And since we've hit the buy rounds, they haven't really let up at all. Success rates have been pretty strong, but we'll see what they manage now as once again Dignitas delve deep into their bank accounts and pull out all that they can. Utilities looking good. I mean, all in all, this is a fairly strong buy. I'm curious to see now Ence's approach. We saw a little bit of a faster play into A than what we've previously been looking at. Uh, but that was up against the pistols. Obviously, the Mac 10s leading the charge down through Ivy. In this situation, it's very early pop dog controls. They drop down the Molly, forcing any players that would be there out. I think they heard Forrest drop off the ladder, but it might not matter. X7 gets tagged down to 12, so he can't really afford to continue aggressing. In fact, Forrest goes looking for him and finds him all too quickly. A second as well onto Ariel. And pop dog reclaimed. Get right, just waltzing back on in there after Forrest clears it for him. A great start for Dignitas, but it might not continue that way. Sergei pulled one back, but I think he got naded to one health, and Halzerk just hunted him down with the USP to make sure that he wasn't going to be living. With that, confirms a, a pretty firm 4 on 2 at this point in favor of Dignitas, especially with this flank coming in. If they can delay a small bit, if they even get the one kill, then at that point it's pretty much over. And there you go, Forrest. He gets himself another. That's three for him in the round so far, leaving it all on Alu. And as I mentioned, with that flank coming in, there's not really much that he's going to be able to do. Can get right, get another knife? It would be his second of the game so far. Oh, it might happen. It actually might. Oh, God. We're only 11 rounds in. That's ridiculous. It feels like we're even watching Fnatic at this point. The amount of times the knives are being pulled out. Why the match between Dignitas and Fnatic is always such an interesting one. <laughs> the balls. But especially considering the fact that they're behind by so much. Now, five to six, they can't allow Ents to pull any further ahead. I've got to shut this down. Four rounds in a row for the CT side to feel comfortable moving forward. And that is a big ask. They will find an eco if they win this one here, though. And that will at least assist them in reaching their goal. Yeah, I mean... This is, this is a crucial round for Dig, as you said, if they do want to come out with the half that they can be happy with. And I don't think they'd be feeling too upset even if they were to end it with six. But as you said, when you do get that 3-0 lead, you're expecting a little bit more of yourself. So they would like to, to find at least one more. This investment here, with the one Deagle being the only real weakness, there's still a, a really good opportunity for Ants to try and fight their way right back into this and maybe even bring themselves up towards those double digits or at least get close to them, as you said, they'd be looking for. Get right though in towards Pop Dog. This has been a position he's played most of the round, so it's it's not really going to be catching anyone off guard, but it's still a, a difficult spot to deal with either way, especially when you are a bit lacking on utility and you need to save those Molotovs and such for when you're going into the bomb site. For the moment though, just the default. They're definitely looking to split onto the A bomb site. Two fa uh, two players favoring towards Ivy, and then two around their main. And I guess once they take contact is when they'll really try and advance Sergey down through Pop Dog and see if they can maybe get get. I'm going down. Now they have to try and recover that. And I mean, with Freiburg getting one towards Ivy as well, it's not really looking too good for Ents at this point. The Deagle will actually be able to find that kill. Okay, Freiburg falls. Halzerk in a little bit of a trouble, troublesome spot at this point now. As the players are beginning to close in the distance on the up. Sergey in the smoke eventually catching Get Right. He is though left alone, but it's still achievable. I was going to say that until I noticed that the time was actually at six seconds. So no, it is, <laughs> it is not achievable. I yeah, was that... looking at the health more so. That's the limiting factor there, really, isn't it? With the time dissipating, that's going to be the end of the round. And Dignitas taking it up 6-6. Six to six, Nice and tight. And as we said, Ents don't have a lot of money. I doubt we're going to see an investment coming through from them, but uh, I, I can doubt it all I want. Alu pulls that armor and a deagle. Down to $600. He ain't going to have enough to buy up in the next round. But that's all they invest. Okay. Guess he can take the AK if Sergey dies. Oh, he's gonna solo fight early on in towards main. Okay, curious allocation of resources. Yeah, I 
I mean, right now, just trying to bring this on towards B. Sergey with the 1AK as was pointed out. A P250 a couple of blocks. I'm not really expecting much success from this. It actually is the Glock in the hands of Ariel. That finds the only opening they are able to achieve. That gives them the bomb plan to even get himself the AK now. If he finds Halzerk, this is winnable. Unfortunately, he will not be able to, and Sunny also immediately take it down. He tried to swing out wide, see if he could help his teammate, but not really having the best weapon to do so, obviously. Plenty of time for the defuse. A little bit of scavenging going on here from Dig to see what they can retrieve. Maybe a few upgraded pistols, even. Not expecting a lot else, I wouldn't imagine, but 7-6. to six, Dignitas have gone ahead and taken themselves the lead now. Ents haven't not invested much into that round, though. They can be pretty happy with the fact that they were able to get the bomb plant, of course, and a couple, uh, one kill rather off it. Not the worst position. Their buy is still a little bit limited here, especially for Alu. Yeah, I mean, at least able to get the armor and the AK out because of the bomb plant. If it wasn't for that, he'd be on a weaker weapon, either way. But he certainly did his job, I guess, keeping the A players over there. There wasn't a faster rotate to the B bomb sites. Getting the bomb plant was... Certainly a decent achievement for Ents, but now they want to follow it through. They really want to get a seventh round on the board just to make themselves feel that a little bit better moving on to the next. Dignitas will be happy to get nine, and Ents want to prevent it. Nate early on, not doing any damage, and Alu moves towards E-Box. He's out, and I don't know if they've spotted him at this point. I'm pretty sure they haven't with the smokes down, but they'll suspect it because they gave it control. Halzer, that's a big shot to whiff. They've lost Get Right and Exist. Alu springing into action towards the A-bomb site. And although they know where he is, he's got support coming through, but swings a little bit early. Forrest onto another. And things could spiral out of control there if they give the opportunities over. But Forrest is going to have to find himself a 4K if they're to win the round. Unfortunately, he's being spotted and tapped to death by Sunny7 on the board for Ents. That's exactly where they want to be moving through to the next. Even an eighth would be nice considering the early start they had. It's, it's a bonus, really. It's not necessary. There's a decent chance of it, though. Is there a weapon on the ground for Exist? I don't think so. Yeah, I think he's going to be, unfortunately, lacking and left onto a, a P250, apparently, so that he can get a few nades. Secondary up, at least, being pulled out there as we have Forest going onto that one. So, yeah, I mean, overall, not a bad buy, especially the double up setup here on train when they're not up against an up from end since Alu, as we said, didn't afford it in the previous round. Couldn't upgrade it to, to it in this one either. So that go, does give them some good opportunities, especially if they're looking to play a little bit more aggressive here early in the round. You know, Freiburg pushed up playing anti-flash around Ivy as the op is just posted on the angle. As we can see though, most of the focus at the moment is just around over towards A main. They're showing a little bit of presence in this position. Tron smokes over and have actually found themselves the pop dog control quickly. So with that, they're gonna try and just go straight out towards A. Smokes, of course, already been in place. Been slightly slowed though as the first kill actually comes in in favor of the op there for Halzerk. Oh, except it actually just spamming through the smoke. I think that was able to pick the kill up. Sergey finding get right on towards the bomb site. Halzerk up in heaven. They know the op is around here somewhere, but not sure exactly where. He manages to get the second before going down and allowed for exist as well to find an opening and look at that flank from freiburg great job by exist but freiburg is spotted out even despite the noise exist was making he spots the player moving into main on oh, swings wide alu thought he was going to go in for the defuse right away but exist was taking his time well played and that is going to be an eighth on the board for dignitas closing out the half and doing a pretty good job of recovering and considering the start ends got off to but the Ents have still got a really good leg up. The foundation's built a little bit of a bonus as they're on seven rounds now starting out their CT side. It's their map pick and we expect a good defense from them. But before we find out whether they will have a good one or not, we've got to throw things over to one quick break. We will be back in just a little bit with half number two.
Welcome back, everybody. Have to go on live here. Dignitas on the T side. Starting it out with eight rounds. They are one up. Their CT side didn't go exactly according to plan, but they did lose the pistol and go down three to zero. So there is still some hope. Haven't been completely smashed. Sense. Hear a lot of noise coming in towards that B site. Sergey is all by his lonesome to take this initial contact, and he is out of there. Yeah, fortunately quick enough to actually make it around the corner and stay safely alive because he was the sole defender on this side of the map as well. That's why that position can be risky. Obviously, if you peek it, you can get that info early, ensure that you aren't going to be left alone on the bomb site. It gives you the ability to stack far towards B early on. You do just have to ensure you stay alive. Dignitas, though, getting themselves that control. The bomb looks like it will be taken in this direction. There's a couple players, though, close in Popdog. Four Ents who will be in a position where they have the ability to get that quick flank on towards B. So this could be quite difficult, but obviously Sergei's going to need to find some success. He has the help from Sunny now in the back lines, but the Glocks dropping out on top of him are very difficult to deal with, as you would actually imagine. Sunny as well nearly being caught off guard, trying to stay alive, but it won't be allowed. So far, only one trade actually been returned from Enz. That flank, though, eventually coming true. Yeah, Alu gets the trade, at least as Ariel does go down after only finding one himself. X7 pushed back to the spawn. Actually going to be wrapped around on by Forrest, and now they have the bomb planted for them. Yeah, Alu's going to have a rough time at pulling this out. He's got to hit all the headshots, and it's like whack-a-mole. They're just popping up everywhere and disappearing. It's on the hardest difficulty. And <laughs> Alu can't even get a bullet off. Hearing noises everywhere. It's like something from a horror game. No idea where these guys are. And the funny thing is, it looks so obvious from our perspective. I wish we could watch this round back without X-Ray. He knows there's players probably in a crossfire somewhere, and he was just trying to bait someone into peeking. But the reality is, in a position like that, if they don't peek you, if they play it passive, they've won the round. That You have to rely on them making mistakes. And unfortunately for Alu, they did not. No, and a pause actually coming in from, from Dig here. It is a tactical pause, so I guess wanting to ensure that they're not going to be dropping any silly rounds here up against force against a force buy, which they know likely is to come in from Ents. And as we can see, that this is the case, a scout, a UMP. Second scout, I like that, okay. Alongside a couple deagles as well. Sonny actually just going to take the deagle without Kevlar, so the X7 has that scout. So yeah, this is actually a relatively dangerous buy here coming into play, but Dig, they've taken one of the safer approaches themselves. They've gone for three AKs, a Galil and a MAC-10. So they do at least have the weapons here to work up against this investment. Obviously, that can be kind of a two-way street. If you do end up losing it, that costs you even more because then you're giving away AKs and such. But overall, Dig, they took a pause and they have had a bit of a discussion. So I'd imagine they'll probably play this round a little bit safer. I don't think we'll see any straight-up rush coming in, but they could prove me wrong. So it rounds like this play out as a high-risk, high-reward. You're risking losing all the weapons, but... Also, the chances of you f winning the round now are much higher, and the reward for that is facing an eco and connecting yourself, presumably then the 11th round on the board. What they're going for, and it's going to be a slow approach. Knowing they're up against pistols, they've got to hold for any pushes. Be on top of their game when they do come through. Halzerk hasn't been having the best of affairs on that CT side op. Now on the terror side, holding an AK in his hands. Could be in a little bit of danger with Ariel up close if a flash comes through. Luckily, though, no flashes to play with for the CT side. Even still, he loses a lot of HP. Yeah, I'd like to see him trade that, and indeed, gives it over towards Freiburg. Doesn't trade with Getrice, so Getrice still has the MAC-10, giving him the chance to build up some money with that, and Halzer can kind of just sit back and give some assistance from the further range with the Galil. Still be some effective, at least. Oh, quick headshot from Halzerk as well, still coming in. I, I was saying maybe he'd stick back a little bit more passively, but proving me wrong, even helping by giving them further opening kills. Oh. He just gets one, but a couple of pistols actually begin in the frag here on the side of Enz, so at least some damage has been done. There was a chance for Sergei to catch Forrest, but despite hitting a couple bo uh, body shots, it's not enough. So yeah, able to come out on top of that, keeping the three rifles in play. All they lost was the MAC-10 and the Galil, so... I don't think they're going to be too upset about how that went, especially as they know, obviously, that was the full investment. So now they're coming up against an eco where they really have the opportunity to start building up their own economy. So we should be seeing 11 to 7 before Ents are able to get back onto the buy. And this is definitely beginning to worry me because, I mean, Dignitas were down 14 7 on the last map and they were able to make the comeback happen there. What happens when they already have the lead? <laughs> well, that, that's very true. Yeah. That was a huge play by Freiburg that started that train or continued it at least. Saw in the previous round, a, a nice little flank down from uh, Sergei. 
time they're stacking up on the A site, but unfortunately not getting a whole bunch done. The two kills for Freiburg give him a little bit of extra cash. But it, I think it was uh, AK's taking the majority of kills. 11 to 7. Ents now in with a buy. But Aldo forced down to a glass cannon off. Definitely usable still on the CT side. Where you're going to have AK's straight facing you with so many angles that you can hold and fall back from quite quickly into cover. But it does limit him in terms of aggressive plays with that op, which we know Alu is comfortable in doing. You even see his initial, like the start of the round is a very passive hold into main, just looking for any feet as people cross. And then later holding on the ramp on B, where Dignitas are currently moving towards. So perhaps a chance for Alu to shine. Yeah, there certainly is the opportunity. Playing a little bit more passive, as you said. Also, didn't have Cavalier, so didn't want to be in a position where he can get naded early on. Coming forward, gets the first. Most importantly, though, has the Heaven then covered off as well to allow Sergei to purely focus on that ramp push as it comes in. With that, he's able to get a double himself as well. The bomb is dropped. Holzerk's left alone as all his teammates are gone before he really realizes what has happened. And they're pushing him. There we go. The boost comes in for Alu to go ahead and close it out. Three for him. Two for Sergei. A perfect behold. And with that, 11 to 8. Ents do manage to come out with the open end gun round there on their CT side. A round that they very much needed. And off the back of that, I mean, Dignitas, they can buy on most of their players here, except for Halzerk. So I'd imagine they will go for it. Indeed, up dropped over. Freiburg has enough to buy for himself. Exist has gotten an AK into his hands, hands as well. So they have managed to spread the money out perfectly. So there is still another full buy here for Ents to overcome. But if they manage to, that's when they really start building their way back into this and uh, at that point may even have a chance to try and tie up the score. Most likely, they'd at least reach 10. That is uh, definite, definitely necessary for ends at the moment. They're looking to hit those double digits before Dignitas run away with the game. Forrest opening it up, but he shut down immediately. Ariel on the trade. Sonny was there to help as well. And Dignitas, they've lost a player. The one-for-one -one trades are decent for them. They won't be upset. A pop dog control down towards the bottom of the ramp as well. That swing going to come through. Great damage by Get Right. It's traded back and forth, but Sergey on 7 HP plus the kill for Halzerk. Leaves them in a good spot to make a push happen. And in fact, Get Right switches around towards Heaven now. So he's watching for the play out by Sunny as he comes out of Connector. I think he... No, I don't think he was spotted then. Get right seems to still be checking for the player there. He snuck past them. That is dirty. No way he suspects another player, but he did, what, 93 damage to Sergey plus takes down Sonny? That's a great round for him. Oh. oh. <laughs> Especially as Alu just tries to take the jump peek across. Tried to see if there was anyone holding the angle. Didn't know if he could fall back safely to that position. And even trying to be a little bit more cautious by jumping across, he still goes down. And as you said, with the damage that had been done on the Sergey. It's not looking good for him. He he may just have to go ahead and save the AK at this point. With that, he could drop a weapon. He's going to be actually spotted now by Freiburg. He had the AK, so there was the ability for the quick headshot, but wasn't able to connect it. 12 to 8, dig. They lose one round. They immediately bounce back. Fortunately, Ents, after taking that previous round with all five players surviving, they do still have enough to reinvest. So that's really the only positive we can see right now. Because if they do end up losing this one, at that point, Dignitas are going to be running their lead up, up to 14 to 8. And then we'd have to see Ents coming back with a, a comeback reminiscent of what Dignitas are able to actually achieve there on Nuke. CT side train, I guess, is a little bit more uh, comfortable for Ents, so maybe that's where they can make the comeback happen. Already taking down Get Right and putting it in to a man advantage situation. The poking towards B doesn't do a lot for them this time. And a three-man Ivy push looking to come through. X7 currently in position to hold that one down. He's not going to molly to use, but a smoke's still in play that he can lob in, and that should desperately slow down any attempt Dignitas have at moving forward. He threw his smoke, but it wasn't towards Ivy, evidently. X7 is about to find this contact. It's going to be scary if he peeks any wider. The op is posted up as well, but no, just waits until he spots the barrel of Exist. With that, he is able to go ahead and capitalize on the kill. Smoke eventually goes down, but not before X7 got himself a little bit of vision. And Mahaltrek missing that shot, I was going to say. It is still a very strong position for Ents. 
Haltek eventually returns one as does Forest through the smoke. And I mean, now having a one on two, this is definitely winnable. There's 40 seconds left, so a little bit more limited about where he can bring this. He doesn't really have time to run back around to B. Unless he wanted to, of course, take it through the spawn, which right now he could consider. But he's a bit worried about, of course, people watching towards Ivy at the moment. So peeking his way, we're trying to see if he can spot any of these players. We have Sunny back towards Mayan. Sergey on the bomb site. Smoke goes in to try and allow him to plant, but that's not going to be an easy task either way. He actually spots Sunny over towards Mayan, but I don't think he's going to expect this close player. And yeah, he does not. So tries to stick the bomb, goes down. Nine for Ents. They bounce back themselves immediately. Not letting Dignitas get too much control here on their T side. They probably will still buy because they have two players, double eco and three who can actually get the uh, the full investment. Yeah, pause coming in so they can actually talk about it though. Because it's not going to be ideal. As I said, two players looking at a double eco, they'll be limited to pistols. Maybe a scout for Forest, but I wouldn't imagine. And then again, they can also consider whether or not they want a rifle and nades on Halzerk. Or if they could consider bringing out the glass cannon op. Knowing that Ents very likely still don't have an op in play in this round. They know that pretty consistently Sergei's been playing close on the ramp down towards B, so any faster play that they want to try could be successful if they can get a smoke for the connector and the crossover. But I think what we'll see when the next buy round with an AWP comes out, a potential flag, as I think it's, what, three rounds in a row where he's been close ramp? They could send the AWP over there to try and take that early pick. Oh, okay. A glass cannon op out from Halzerk. I did not expect that. I don't anticipate the B play this time simply because but you don't want to be peeking ramp like that with no armor. Especially in, like when there's so many close range angles they could already be up close. No, it's just not doable. So he's looking all the way down to Ivy. Try and catch any early aggression if they go up on top of the trains. But instead, they're right up close. Sunny behind blue trains starting to fall back as get right falls. So too does Freiburg, the range duel with the UMP. Yeah, great work by Ariel. This round has just fallen apart for Dig. Yeah, everyone's gone except for Halzerk. He has that glass cannon up in play and has got one for himself now, but it's going to have to be the ace clutch. One on five, that first kill already cost him over half of his life. So, I mean, it's not looking good for him. With so much time left on the clock as well, saving is not going to be an easy task. I don't know if Ents will want to hunt him down. But considering they do have a UMP, they could at least consider sending Ariel in, knowing that he's been tagged up as well. And yeah, they do also have a player pushed up on Ivy. That's a bit more of a risky one against the op, yeah. X7 goes down. This is at least some damage being connected. They do still have the lead, so if they can keep the economy low for Ents in, in a spot where one round win would break it, then that's ideal. He's not going to expect his player up close on the left. Oh, okay, actually checks it, but doesn't connect the shot. Surviving through to the next round would have just left him glass cannon again with Glocks to back him up. So, again, probably not the best of spots to play from. Possibilities would have been there. A faster B play. Glocks run down. One of them buys a smoke. Could work. But on 12 to 10, Dignitas are stalling a little bit now that they're on an eco. And get a chance to build up some more economy and make those banks, make the, the bank fat. They're going to very quickly rush down to B. There's only one player here to start this one off. Sergey drops a nade. Not going to do any damage to Molly as well, but all four are coming in through heaven. Yes, one dies. Maybe even the second to Alu, but Sergey's going to hold it by himself in a nice little swing around. <laughs> Lol. Unlucky Sergey. You know, Alu clearly didn't have any faith in him. <laughs> he was like, yeah, he's going to die either way. I'll just nade in and get the, the trade. It's not the end of the world. It's the only casualty they suffered in that round. But, I mean, that was an opportunity for them to keep all five alive and really build up their money, considering in the one before they only had three alive and the one before that only two. But uh, I mean, it's not a lot of reinvestment. But as you can see, X7 is still on an MP9 here. So that's not ideal. It gives them full utility on everyone. So it really is the only weakness that we see. And even then, looking at the economy of Dignitas, they're by the day about. It's not ideal. Having a limited amount of utility to this, they decide that they actually want to take this a little bit quicker. Forest in behind the green train, but I believe he has been spotted. And yeah, now taken down by Sunny. And with that aggression around main from X7, this round is again shut down before Dignitas can find any sort of opening into it. It's a two on five. Freiburg being slightly tagged by the nade as well, making things just that little bit more difficult for him. Turns away from the flash and still gets flashed. That's pretty much Dignitas's round or round history over the last five or so summed up. No matter what they do, answer there waiting for them, shutting them down. I'm walking into the three-man a-hole. 
did not work. Right, Bergen exist. Gonna group back up. They still have the bomb in their possession. Freiburg crossing over ain't gonna be easy. He's got a flash though, so we can pop it out if he wants to fall back. The only problem then is that they know he's falling back if he flashes out and doesn't go anywhere. But if he dry pinks it, he's gonna be facing into, I think, the AWP. Yeah, it was Alu at stop sign. I'm walking out to the A site. Not the most successful, really, with 30 seconds left. They've got to go fast. They've been spotted now. Good connection by Alu. Exist waits, hoping someone comes through pop, but it's E-Box he's going to be beat from. The timing was perfect for X7 as well. Yeah, just as Exist had begun to focus onto the player back on blue train. As you said, good timing. 12 to 12, so it has now been tied up by Ents. But you can't count Dignitas completely out. The unlucky thing for them is, though, that they likely are going to have to concede the lead before they can get another buy into play. And with Train not being as comfortable of a map for them as Nuke is, it definitely can be a little bit harder to make those comebacks happen. But I, I, I still don't think I can really count them out because, I mean, it was 14-7. They brought it back 16-14 to 14 back on Nuke. Right now, it's 12-12. Sure, they're about to give, give up the lead by one round, but they'll be bouncing back with the buy in the next. And even on Nuke, I think we've seen them win a couple of these weaker buy rounds. So who knows? Maybe there's a chance with the pistol. So far, though, every time they've come out A, at least for the last three or so rounds, they have been absolutely decimated. And it doesn't look like that's going to be changing. Only, oh, he got double naded. <laughs> he was seven health, slightly overkill. <laughs> yeah, he's already dead. Oh, yeah, 13 to 12. This is where ends are bombing ahead. They've got so much money in the bank. At least two rounds they can lose and still buy up coming into that third. Meaning Dignitas will only face an eco when they're on map and series point. If they make it to 15, 13. That's a hell of a road to make before Ents are uh, beaten back. Flash is over early on, but Dignitas not looking to commit out hate. Not this time. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me five times, I'll probably go B. We'll see if that's going to work out for them as again. Sergey holds close on ramp. We said this has been a consistent factor. The spray doesn't... It lands a bit of damage on the nade, but the thing is, nobody returned fire. So at this point, he's suspecting there's, there's probably not a whole bunch of, uh, or there's probably not anyone up there. Now the A players don't get any contact. They get fishy. You know, Dignitas have five rounds in a row, just ran at A. It's been faster plays. They've shown something by now. And so there's a three-man stack on B, and it's making the perfect read. Yeah, strong setup. Alo's going to take the first point of contact. Then once he gets that kill, if they don't see anyone follow up at that point, Sergei can go ahead and push in, get himself the control, and give them heaven to work with to really make that push that much more difficult out your ramp. Sergey, I mean, the smoke is down right now. That's complicating things a little bit. The leg has been spotted, so Getray has to double free kill. Alu, of, of course, being smoked off at the moment as well. Can't really contribute too much with the AWP, but it's only now the push is actually coming in. Sunny's still here. They already have the rotation ready as well, so Ents are still definitely in a pretty decent position. Sunny pops out, manages to. The bomb at this point can't be planted unless they manage to get rid of him on the middle of the bomb site, and it is not happening. Halzerk not able to find that anything. It's all on to get right now. One on three, and he needed this. Okay. Did he get dinked and nade at the same time? I'm not sure. I heard him get dinked. <laughs> yeah, the, the nade killed him. So, I mean, that just... He was just getting wrecked. Dagger not having any success anymore. What's it now being? One, two, three, six rounds in a row here for Ents. So they've, they've begun to pull off a little bit of a comeback of their own. After, of course, being down at the beginning of this half. I think I was already low, no? Was that maybe the nade that dinked him? He was. I, he may have got dinked through, like, the corner of the wood on, like, you know, the, the floor. Could have been. Because of the angle they were shooting up from. Either well, way, he my got point was wrecked. he was screwed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 14 to 12. This is now a strong CT side from Ents. If ever we've seen one, the thing is, we were saying this at 12 8. You know, Ents could come back into it. We could see it. And especially because it's their map pick and trade CT side. That's what you'd expect. Good performances, trades back and forth. But pretty much fourth for Ents as they find themselves a triple. Freiburg left to try and cross the site. Gets a smoke down, but there's already a player swinging on him. Bye. Bomb doesn't even get planted. Forrest is all alone. He's out of the game. And they would have loved a bomb plant to give him a little bit of extra money, but they're going to have to try for three rounds in a row to hit overtime. Or we're going to be on map number three. And indeed, a timeout being called. We mentioned Train was looking like, obviously, a decent map for Ents, but overall, all three maps, you could see 
painting a Dignitas favored pool. And I would still agree when we go to overpass that Dignitas look favored. But Ants have definitely done the necessary groundwork coming into this to uh, not, not count themselves out of it when we move through, even with what they did on Nuke up until the last nine rounds. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, going into map three, I still, I still think it could be a series that goes either way. Especially if Dignitas do begin to struggle, I, I, I don't want to see them have, having a poor, a poor start over an overpass, which would be a bit of an issue for them. I, I mean, again, they had a little bit of a poor start here on train, then they were fighting in, but a lot of the time getting their economy broken and just making it so difficult for themselves. Right now, back on the buy, obviously they had a, a little bit of a chat there, realizing they need three in a row for overtime, that it is still very achievable. But so far on this D side, at least since the guns have come out, Ensign just looked so, so dominant that it, I do find it hard to believe that it, they're going to be able to achieve it. Okay, not quite landing on the damage, actually. But yeah, just the, a slow default. Nothing special. This default being a different approach than what we've seen from Dignitas so far. And, and that's very much down to the fact that it's an incredibly important round and nothing has been working. Faster plays are not the ones. As we now see the minute mark come on the clock, Dignitar Dignitas are going to have to start making a move. Already losing out on main control, though, the aggression in from Sunny. Always ready for a sunny day with his cap on. Keep his vision clear, but he's going to need clear vision and quick flicks to take down Forrest. But Ariel's now here to support him as well. Second player up close. That smoke has not really done anything. I think Sonny's realized that as he walked further back. Like, Ariel, I asked you to smoke towards T-spawn. I had a position in mind. He gets himself a kill either way, and as they start to come out through Ivy, spray from X7 was ambitious. And as they run into a Molotov to take him down, get right and exist, lose almost all of their health. Yeah, it was get right towards main that had been tagged up already, and he does end up getting finished off. Oh. But now it's the three men left trying to come out through that smoke over towards Ivy, which does not go well. There it is, 16 to 12 for Ents as they finish off here on train.